What's up you guys? So last video we did the passenger side. Sorry, I'm just looking because we did the passenger side on the car and we got rid of all the dents. Or actually we didn't really get rid of all the dents, but we did it as best as we could as I walk over here and show you guys. Check out that video if you haven't checked it already. We cut out that fender there. We uh, put the door on and we also fixed some of the damage that was there. We got a lot of that dent out and as best as we can without being too much more invasive and without replacing that panel. So check out that video. But in today's video, we're gonna be tackling the opposite side. So we're gonna be tackling the uh, driver's side fender. So this one here, this one didn't sustain as much damage. It's not too bad. And it's gonna get covered 100% by those fender flares, the spoon fender flares that we have. But we do still have to cut it out and trim it. So we've got it marked here. We're still kind of messing around with exactly where we're gonna put it, but we'll get that finalized. And we're gonna cut out all that whole section and get it ready. Also, we have this here. So we have this kind of portion that's dented in. You don't really see it, but we're gonna use a slide hammer as well to fix that too, but let's get into it. Omar, what are you doing? Adding, adding some horsepower. <laughs> How many horsepower is that, Dad? That is 15. 15? <laughs> yeah. Those are supercar suspect <laughs> flames. <laughs> You're gonna make it look even more suspect in that thing. All right. Well, we're gonna finish drawing this over here, maybe adding a few more flames, and then we'll get to cutting. So here's what we got and where we're at. We're gonna come through here. Normally we would have turned down kind of with this arc here, similar to the other side, but the work's already halfway done for us, like you can see here. So we're just gonna carry that same line across and go all the way across. So let's go ahead and cut that up. This stuff here, uh, look, this was the area that was obviously smashed in and there's some metal that is folded in. So I'm gonna try to pick this out, straighten it out as much as I can, and then we'll smash this out, bend this out so that these two ends meet and we can do that there. So while I'm doing this, Omar's over here mixing a little bit of Nutty Putty. Got some Bondo so we can fill the other side. Not too much, just a little. It's actually our first time doing this, so. So any experts out there, don't judge us. <laughs> Man, this stuff stinks. Yeah, I think so. I'm just closing the can here. Oh, this guy does his magic. Yeah. Omar's the one that does all the drywall, so I think if anybody has a better chance of making this work, it's him out of the two of us. <laughs> Mr. Cut Twice, Measure Once. Dude, you got the stuff going everywhere. What, use it with the thing. Use a spatula, it's like. What's a spatula? And you better find it quick, because you only got a couple minutes, apparently. Let's do it. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> you do? All of a sudden? No. Me neither. All right, we're gonna let this dry and see what happens. Don't criticize us too much if there's any body bodywork experts in there, because we uh, this is our first kind of bodywork scenario here with Bondo. So we'll see what happens. It's probably gonna be a lot more sanding than we would like, but whatever. Not a big deal. Peel it off like I did there, like. Right. 
so we got this bent up pretty decent. I'm gonna have to clean this up and honestly, a lot of the stuff is gonna be hidden, you guys, so not a huge deal. Like I said, I would have probably cut it more in line originally with this arc, but this was damage that was done from the lift going in there. That was literally already cut. So we kind of had to follow that and make do with it. But we'll attach it through here and put a bunch of this same seam sealer stuff that you see in here. So this is factory. They attach the two with seam sealer and we'll do something similar. On the other side, Omar is over here with the mud. Just getting a, a second coat on it. Just a nicer coat there. And then we'll start sanding, but everything's pretty well filled. I mean, it, it looked pretty decent and it wasn't too bad before, but we'll start getting some sanding on there after once this dries. And like I said, this was almost good. Like we tried fitting the, the fender flare on there and it actually mated with it. Whereas before when we put the fender flare on there, there was like a maybe quarter inch gap before, before we did all like the pulling and all that stuff too. So it's gonna look 100% once we're done here, but pretty uh, pretty cool stuff to work with. I don't have too much experience working with the Bondo near the Zomar, but we're getting it done and um, it should be pretty cool. So here's what you see, and this is with it finally hardened. We haven't done the sanding yet. This is just with us putting a, a coat on it and a little bit thicker coat at that. Reason being is, like I said, we're new to working with this stuff. We did sand where we adhered it to, and we also have to, there's not a very hard body line. It is towards here, which I don't know if you guys can see this, but you can kind of see this body line here, but really on S2000s, it, that body line kind of drifts away uh, through the middle of the quarter here and then kind of returns just ever so slightly here before it meets in with the same line on the door. So we're gonna sand it, reform that body line because we kind of just rounded it over, gave us some extra material to work with. We'll sand it, kind of recreate that body line through there and get that going. Also had to fix a small little ding on the door here, but no big deal. But this is what I hopefully wanted to show you guys. If I can put this on here at the same time with one hand and the camera. Like check out now, like there's absolutely no gaps in our panel. So our panel is gonna fit nice. There's no more dents that it's gonna be affected by. And this is gonna fit on here beautifully now. We just have to get the sanded and prepped and eventually painted, but for now primered and get everything ready. So that's kind of exciting and that's gonna work out. And I also, probably in the next video, we'll deal more with how we're going to attach both these panels on both sides. So we're gonna tack weld them. This one still has to be bent up. You can see we still have probably about a quarter of an inch of a gap between the two. So same as the other side you saw we were doing, we're gonna pound this up. And again, the reason why we're cutting these out like that is so that you can actually fit a wheel and it will come up to the fender line here because we're recreating the fender, bringing it out. If you just were to leave this and then put wheels that fit these fender flares, when you hit a big bump or something, it would bottom out on this old lip. So we're actually, in a way, extending the fender, uh, the inner fenders, so that our fender liner, these are steel fender liners, but we're making it so that a wheel can fit here, stick out past while this fender sits out here. So that's the reason for that. A couple other things on the way, uh, I'll show you guys. Like I said, this side, same thing. We pounded this out, so we'll be able to weld this so we're going to tack weld it across and use seam sealer clean up all these edges we're not going to leave it like this but what we'll do is once we tack weld it we're going to grind it so that we have raw metal hopefully tack weld it across maybe every inch or so same as a factory and then we'll use seam sealer to seal it all up and then we'll grind it smooth probably put another coat of seam sealer that sort of thing and i want to show you guys this too so these are the rear spoon fenders and we also have front spoon fenders. I haven't fully fitted them yet. I just kind of hung this one here just to kind of see how it was gonna fit. Once we bolt it up, we're gonna see how the fitment is. I'm hoping that it's gonna be good. We have a little bit of stuff to work on with this. Whoever prepped these did uh, not the greatest job at prepping them. So I'm gonna have to do some more prep work so that these look good if we go with them. But the reason why I'm saying this is because if for some reason these fit like garbage and it looks like hell, I found a set of front fenders, OEM front fenders that we can always tackle. So they're a little bit banged up, but I mean, look at the car, it's banged up. So if we have to do a little bit, the driver's side, which one was it? Yeah, the driver's side is not too bad, but the passenger side does have a little bit of damage. 
just from somebody having a lowered car and, and it grabbing the lip. So worst comes to worst, we'll have OEM fenders go on the car, but we'll tackle those ones first. And as you guys can see, we have the rear bumper finally. So I went and picked up the rear bumper from a uh, person that I purchased the car from, and here's the damage on the rear bumper. So it has this kind of hole or crack or whatever we're calling this thing here. So that's where the rebar, which we already tossed out, punctured the back. So we might see if we can kind of flip this in. Obviously, this is pushed inside of there, but on another video, I'll see if we can make this work. So I might try flipping this out so that it's back to meet here. See if we can patch it and make use of it. Because if we can use this bumper, uh, I think we might as well save some money on the expense. And it, the rest of it doesn't look too bad. The only other thing is here, kind of a little bit kinked looking because I think something happened where it kind of slid across here, but really you can't see this much from the back. Uh, and we could always cut this black portion out if we really wanted to as well and just leave the bottom of the bumper open. So I'm gonna try and make this bumper work, we'll see. But it is important that we have this bumper because in order for us to start mounting these rear fenders, I wanted to have the bumper. We're also gonna have to trim portion of the bumper here, again, for the same reason that we're trimming the fender because when we bring the wheel out, and we put different wheels on it. We don't want it to hit on the back of the bumper there. And that is pretty well gonna do it. So we'll fit the bumper uh, shortly and we'll put the rear fenders on and then we can drill these bolts and hang those fenders. So everything's coming along pretty soon. And we have those bolts coming for these fenders too. So we're gonna use an M5 uh, button head cap or cap screws. They're called a few different things, but we're gonna use M5s on here with the Allen, so they're actually powder coated black. They're gonna look pretty trick, but those are on their way so that we can drill the holes and mount the fender. All right, you guys, so thanks so much for watching. If you're stopping in for the first time, make sure you smash that subscribe button and turn on that little bell so you're notified of all the latest videos. We're moving very quickly with this build and it should be all together fairly shortly. Just some updates. I have the clutch showing up this weekend. We have a ton of body work that we can tackle and things are moving underway very fast. And also, if you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It helps the videos, helps the channel, and we're just gonna keep motoring along with this and other builds in the future. Once we get done with this one, you guys know we're gonna be starting something else. So stick around, and thanks again, you guys. We'll see you on the next video.